Hey everybody, welcome to my first ever live so along YouTube. <laughs> my name is Genevieve and this is the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted. I am super excited to be doing these with you all uh, for the next uh, few weeks because my goal here is to um, do it for at least one hour each weekday until December 23rd. So we're going to do a little bit of sewing each day uh, and I'm also going to share some other fun things um, that are happening here in my creativity corner, my little corner of my house that all the creativity happens. Uh, one of the things, if you're if you're new here, uh, that is kind of my feature uh, of what I do in my YouTubes uh, is in my in my videos is that I always share the healing part of sewing or crafting. Uh, and so um, I figured we we would kind of switch things up a little bit, uh, but I do think that this will lean into some of the healing parts of what we do as creatives, as crafters. And that is if you're here live with me or if you watch this on the replay, I would love to hear which part of sewing would you like to skip? Is there a piece of the process that you're like, mm, that part of the process really isn't for me? Uh, if if you have something like that, I'd love to hear what it is down in the comments. Uh, as we go through things, feel free to ask any questions that you might have about whatever I'm doing, um, whether I'm showcasing a product or I'm sewing. Um, I'm going to, once I get to the sewing part, we are going to tilt the camera downwards so that you can see what I am sewing, um, the camera angle, I wanted to make sure that I could be looking right at you um, for the majority of it. So thank you so much for joining me live. And if you're here on the replay, please say hello as well. And again, the question for today's live so long is, if there was one piece of the process that you could skip, what piece of the process would that be? All right. For me, I'll share mine. For me, it would be interfacing. Um, I, I wish that there was a magic wand that allowed me to interface things in a matter of seconds. Um, interfacing, whenever I see the pattern is interfacing, it's an immediate like, mm, I just want to skip over that. Um, however, interfacing does make, and stabilizer d does make our projects so much more beautiful um, but yeah, I'd love to skip it. It's one of the reasons I do like the self-adhesive, um, interfacings. They're just pricey. So then that adds to the cost of your, um, your end product. But I do, I do find myself using the self-adhesive, um, more often than not. Um, it's not that I don't like ironing. Some, some of you might choose ironing as the thing that you'd like to skip. I actually enjoy the ironing process. It's the cutting out of the interfacing. I just feel like why? <laughs> so that's mine. Please share yours. Um, I am looking on my iPad. I do see your comments. Um, so feel free, say hello, tell me how long you've been sewing and what, um, what part of the sewing is not the fun part for you? So today I am going to showcase two things before we get to the sewing part. One is I placed my first order with a small business called New Moxie. Um, if you're familiar with them, let me know in the comments. Um, I know that they were at So Magical uh, in um, November. Uh, and I, I think I heard about them there from that group from So Magical, um, which I'm very excited to be a part of So Magical Texas in February. Um, when I saw the hardware that they had, I was like, mm, that I had some, some things in my brain that I wanted to make and um, they had some hardware to go along with it. But what I loved about New Moxie, and I think this is what a lot of people love about New Moxie, is when you get what you ordered, it comes so beautifully wrapped up and so nice. Like it's another little gift. Um, so I wanted to share that with you all. So this is my order from New Moxie. It came in this cute little snowman tin. Like, how cute is that? Like, I get a whole little tin um, with my order. Um, and that, that on my order, there's a, I always love personal notes. If you've ever bought anything for me, you know that I send a handwritten thank you. Um, I don't know if that's just the old school in me, but the, even here on my little 
um, packing slip, the fact that there's a handwritten note, um, that means a lot to me that people take the time to do that. I did order some stickers. The stickers are some gifts, so I won't show the stickers, um, but I ordered, they have some really fun and witty stickers over at New Moxie. Um, I ordered, so first I'll show you this. I ordered these and they're stapled shut, so I don't know if you'll be able to see. There you go. They're a um, antique nickel leaf snaps. How beautiful is that? Um, they're so pretty. So I have um, some fabric in mind that I'm gonna be using um, these. I've never done these types of snaps before. So it's a lot, of, I know there's people who um, have like a little screwdriver set. I don't know if I have a, a little screwdriver set with a um, Phillips head. I'm gonna have to find one of those. But I got some of those and then they also had little like the same the antique nickel purse feet leaves aren't they cute um so they had those so i got those and then um they had here i, I can get this out this isn't stapled they had these acorn zipper pulls that are also they're very heavy so whatever this is on the the zipper is not going to be able to be this way i don't think it's going to have to be like inside or something um but man look at that baby they're they're very heavy so that came with it that was something i ordered i ordered a few of those and then um i also ordered so those of you who like science my science cup today i don't know if this is backwards for y'all or not but it says science, it's like magic, but real. Um, having a, a child that loves science, it's a big deal in our house. But I also got, cause I have these really, this really fun idea for a bag. I, oh, they also had Trekkie um, Enterprise zipper poles. So I got a few of those as well. They just have really cute stuff. So again, this is new Moxie. Um, and their pricing was very, very reasonable, very decent. Um, and, uh, like I said, the little tin, that's just so cute. And then in the bottom of the tin, and I didn't order this, was some fabric. They gave me, um, so there's also stickers in here as well. They, look at, this one says, creative people don't have a mess. They have ideas lying around everywhere, if that is not the truth. Um, <laughs> press on. I, I need this for my issue with my interfacing. Um, <laughs> an Elsa, which is so cute. And then I don't know if this, I don't, I don't have little kids, so this must be a pup from something. Um, but some stickers that I didn't order. And then this Christmas fabric, look how pretty this is. And it's like a good fat quarter. Isn't that nice? Um, so yeah, again, this is from New Moxie so sweet. I really, really love, um, or I'm going to order from them again, just because the package was so nice. Um, and this is something that I aspire as a small shop as well to like try to make each of my packages, um, feel like a gift. And it definitely did. So thank you, New Moxie, um, for just making us feel special. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for the things I make with those little beauties. So yeah, today in the live, if you're just coming in, um, I do have a question that I've been asking everybody. Feel free to pop your answer in the comments. The question is, in your sewing, in your craft, in what you're doing, is there one part of it that you would wish to skip? For me, it is, it is the cutting of the interfacing. The ironing, I like. I enjoy ironing. I feel like ironing is calming. Um, I don't, I don't mind the ironing. It's the cutting out of the pattern again. <laughs> I think that is the issue for me. So if there's an area of your sewing that you just wish you could skip, um, I think we all would wish to skip the ripping part, but, um, we don't always have a choice there. So an area of the process that you're like, mm, I just wish I could skip that. So feel free to pop that in the comments as we go along. That's the question for today's sew along. Okay. Alrighty. 
the next thing I wanted to show you, um, and I've been, I've been impatiently waiting to do this because um, I didn't want to open them beforehand because um, I wanted to have like an actual true response to to what is there but I did I was lucky enough to snag one of the Sally Tomato advent calendars um they had a order like really early I think it was in August I think September and I did get one of them um so I'm really excited uh to finally open my first four days so now every um, so along live that I do, I am going to open the day prior because um, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. If anybody else got theirs and didn't wake up first thing in the morning and open theirs, um, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. So today we're going to open days one through four. Um, so I'm very excited about that. All right, um, let's start. So here, that's day two. Here's day one. So here's day one of the Sally Tomato Advent Calendar. Hang this little gift on your tree to enjoy all season. Oh, so it must be an ornament. So let's see. Oh, isn't that pretty? A little Sally Tomato ornament. I'll hang that in my office to make my, my creativity corner a little more festive. Oh, and it's on a cork. So it must be done... Um, with a laser very cute all right next is make it a handmade holiday so this is number two all right so it's just like a card inside this one so i don't know what it is let's see happy holidays is a card it says, we're excited to offer you this special gift to you. We have a variety of creative patterns planned for the, the year ahead and want you to be a part of all the fun. Please enjoy a free mini pattern club on us. Oh, that's so cool. Um, how fun. Visit Sally Tomato and it has the code. We hope you'll take advantage of this gift. Most definitely we will be taking advantage of that gift. Very fun. Although many things, I don't usually enjoy sewing miniature things. I get frustrated. Very, that's another area that I would like to skip. <laughs> Frustrating small sewing things. So again, that's the question for today's sewing. sewing uh, sew Along Live is what area of your sewing do you wish you could skip? Um, I'll give it a try, Sally Tomato, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx myself by saying that I won't enjoy it because it's exciting to get a free club, but sewing little things doesn't always go well for me. All right, let's see. Um, day three. So this one's a little bigger, it's a little bag. Um, it says, uh, the season to sparkle. Use this bundle of bling with day seven. So I have to wait for day seven to use this, but let's see. What is in here? It's some hardware. Ooh. So it's some swivel hooks, some, um, oh goodness, gunmetal, three quarter inch, and some purse screws. So mm, that makes me exciting to see what's going to be on day seven. All right. So there's day three. Now day four. Day four is a bigger one. It says <clears throat> it's another one to hold on to until day seven to create something magical and practical. Uh, we truly can't say thank you enough for loving Sally Tomato. Every comment, shared photo, project photo, friendly email, and the community we share brings us joy each day. And we hope it brings you joy too. Well, it does. The community brings me joy, lots of joy. I've made so many new friends since doing um, YouTube, um, it's so crazy because I've been sewing for so long. It's not that I didn't have other sewing friends. I just feel like um, the community that I made like through YouTube and So Magical like already is making me happy. Okay, it was, ooh, and it's a very neutral double zipper. That's pretty cool. Very awesome. So that's gonna go with these. 
and day seven. I think I'm going to put all of this in this bag because knowing me, I'll forget that these go with day seven. <laughs> so I'm gonna put those in there and I'm put my other stuff in there too, just for now. All right, oh, that's so fun. I can't, I mean, it's a full, huge, big box here um, next to my sewing machine. So it's gonna be a process. So today in the sew along, I'm finishing and depending, cause I'm gonna do these for about an hour. Um, I am finishing up uh, one, um, oh, it's Lynn's Handmade. It's her ID, um, oh goodness. I'm gonna have to look at the pattern to know exactly the name, Piper ID Wallet. There we go, Piper ID Wallet. That's what I'm, I'm finishing and making. Um, this is an area that I have really difficult time with and that is buying fabric for a specific project. So I bought fabric for a very specific project and of course you always can't just buy one yard of something. And even sometimes if you buy one yard, you end up with a lot of extra fabric. Um, I have a really hard time setting, like putting that fabric away. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I, I feel like I need to cut that whole yard of fabric into and turn it into something. Um, because I know myself that if I don't make things with that fabric, that fabric will get shoved away somewhere and it'll never see the light of day again. I'll move on. And so um, in order, to, I feel like it's one of those things like to, to say that I, I, um, I bought, I bought it and I use my money wisely. I make things, a lot of things with it. So this is a little Piper um, ID. I do, I'm doing the wristlets for these. These are for my, my handcrafted shop. And this Thursday we are having our, our um, first Thursday for December, even though I know it's not the first Thursday that the first was the first Thursday. We're doing a first Thursday shop drop. So new items are added to my shop every first Thursday. Um, and so I, I'm adding, I'm working on some of those things. So this is the, exactly the same type of um, Piper ID wallet that I am making now finishing. Um, it has this really cute um, snack fabric from Wonderground fabric from Gabby. And then also the lining fabric is also from Gabby as well. Um, I just think it's so cute. It makes me hungry for Disney snacks because if you've ever been to Disney, the snacks are really why we go, I think. Um, but anyways, there we are. This is what we're making. This is what we're working on. So this is where I'm at with it. I did, I was working on this last night. I do already have this one ready to stitch the um, card slot into it. Um, so I'm ready to go with it. I already have the, the front part cut out and the plastic um, template in there for the ID card. Um, I just need to attach the um, little wristlet piece and do the back. So. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing right now. So again, if you're just joining me, say hello. Feel free to say hi in the comments. Um, the question that I have posed for today's sew along is which part of your sewing process do you wish you could skip? For me, the part that I wish I could skip is the interfacing, cutting out the interfacing. I like ironing. It's not the ironing part. It's the cutting the interfacing because I feel like I just cut all this out and now I have to cut more out. Um, and I'm not against interfacing because it always makes our projects look good. My husband just got home. Um, so that's Apollo telling dad he knows he's here. Um, but interfacing is probably the part for me that I, I wish I could skip but I don't skip because it always makes things look nice. So let's, I'm gonna tilt my camera down. Um, I'm gonna see how this works. Let's see, let's see how this looks. Like I said, this is the first time around. I don't know if I want you to just be looking at my chest. So we're gonna tilt it a little bit there. How's that? I know I'm probably gonna be a little bit backwards. Maybe we'll tilt it down just a little bit more. There we go. How's that, everybody? I think that looks good right? I think it looks good. All right. So this next piece, um, we're just stitching this, 
um, card slot, we're stitching that down to hold that in place. So that's what I'm doing now. All right. And I, these big clips, I love them for, for things like this because little clips don't work and pins are, it's too hard to pin. If you've done the Piper ID wallets, let me know. I really enjoy making them. It's such a, it's a good scrap buster, like I said. If I feel like I can't uh, put the fabric away, I'm finding that at least one Piper ID wallet will be made. Love this tool from Sale Right, this little thread burner. I'm so glad. This is a great stocking stuffer. If anybody wants to tell somebody they want something for Christmas, this is definitely a, a good stocking stuffer. All right, so there it is. It's all pushed down so that we can get our card in there when we're ready. Now I need to um, position my my, my tag, and I always use a little bit of sticky tape. It's a really beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. It's not too cold. It's a little, little cool, but not too bad. I'm hoping mm -hmm. it stays that way for this weekend because we're picking up my college student and she lives north of here so hopefully the weather cooperates I'm using is from Wizardry Stitchery. It's the Fairy Floss. So pretty. It's all these pretty pastel rainbow. And I find that it goes with a lot of a lot of colored fabrics. I feel like it it works well. Yeah. So we're just gonna tie this off here and then Burn the threads in the back. I'm gonna close my door. Apollo's probably gonna get upset. Do you wanna come in here, buddy? You come in? Do you wanna come in? He might start crying. We'll see. We'll see if he's okay. My father in law and my husband are home and they're loud. Okay, so there we have that. All right, so we need the lining. I need to find my centers. Okay. All right, so we need our lining. And then I need little clips. I find with this pattern, the um, the zipper tabs, I actually cut them a little little wider than what the pattern has, just because I 
the first one I did, I found that I didn't catch it. So I actually make this a little bit, make them a little bit wider than what the pattern calls for. And I find that that has helped in making sure I catch everything. Ugh, so much stuff. Anybody else get that? Like you have all this stuff in front of your machine. All right. Mm. I didn't even realize I'm wearing my Lynn's handmade t-shirt and I'm doing one of her patterns. That was definitely not planned, but her t-shirts are super comfy and soft. I really love this shirt. Okay, so now we're going to, I just finger press this. I don't need it to be, um, I don't need to take it to the iron. I can finger press it. And then we're gonna just clip it so stays where I want it to stay. I feel like if you were going on a Disney trip or you just love Disney snacks, this is the little ID wallet. This is when I travel, an ID wallet is primarily what I use the whole time. because we're going to have to be turning this baby in a little bit. And make sure we are lining these up. Yeah, I decided to do these lives because I just don't have the time to do recordings um, before the holiday. And I thought, well, I enjoy making the videos. All right, I always usually, where has it gone? Oh, oh my goodness. I usually put on these little tabs just to hold them because a clip, you know, you can't put the clip in there. I usually put a little bit of sticky tape. And then, then put my, and then that way it holds it, that it's straight. And when I'm stitching it, it doesn't move it around. I'll put it on this end, stick it in there. Okay. One little baby. And now, the fun part in there good enough that you're right up close yep because I think I was a little off of center when I positioned my zipper on this one but we got it
always do a back and forth on my connector there. I just like to trim this trim this down a little bit not too close but get some of the excess out of here I love applique scissors to keep next to my machine I just because of the flat side it just really does help you to be able to see like where your stitching is compared to a regular scissors so, little tip, that's why I'm using an applique scissors. Okay. Now we turn this little baby right side out. Which is the fun part when it's something small and has plastic. Come on, come on, come on. And then, where is it? If you've seen me before turn things, I have one of these glass nail files that has a rounded end and a pointy end. Um, I like to use the rounded end to help turn things right side out. Especially like here at the zippers, it kinda, you can get it in there and push it out. There we go. Like on Lynn's video, you know, we didn't um, do anything with our raw edges in there, but that um, little card slot that you had that you sewed in, you can tuck your your seams underneath that so that it looks, you know, you don't really see your seams then when you're looking in the inside. So there's that little baby. How cute. Like I said, they always turn out really, really nice. So, and then this one I made a little wristlet for with just some webbing and one of these connectors. And now I have a little, little wristlet, baby. All right, so those two are done that have the snacky fabric. And I feel like, why? I don't know. I'm looking at these and I'm like, why are these the wrong opposite directions? I must have done something, but I don't think it really matters, does it? It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. No, there they are. Okay. I don't know. I'm going crazy here. All right, let's see. I'm going to um, bring you all back up. Hi. <laughs> um, so I have these done. Now I have two other ones cut out um we'll start with this one since we have time how long have we been here we've been here for 35 minutes if you're just joining me or um you've been here for a while um please say hello oh marie i see i have comments let's look at the comments um marie middleton marie hi thanks for joining me live she said i'm not a fan of interfacing either nope nope not a fan <laughs> I'm with you. Um, 
Randy Lynn says, you're teaching me so much. I'm paralyzed in my leg, but I have a non-pedal sewing machine to sew. That's awesome. I find so much internal healing in sewing. Thank you for what you do. Oh, Randy, that's really sweet. I do agree. That's why I say at the end of all my videos that sewing is a healing part. I feel like crafting your creativity is the healing part. I, I've been, there's so many parts of my journey that I've needed that healing. And I truly believe that creativity is the healing part. Um, your crafting is the healing part. A, a craft in itself, something where you're using your hands and your, I really, anything I make, I feel like there's a part of myself. Um, and I think we all find that like when, when we think about, like our grandparents, our grandmothers, if they sewed for us. Um, anything that I still have from my grandmothers that they sewed for me, I still feel like there's a piece of them there. And I think that's a really beautiful thing about any type of craft, anything that you make with your hands. Um, I feel like my husband does that as well. My husband's a mechanic and um, like our kids, anything that he's like help build or, or work on for them, there's a piece of him there. And so, um, I love that Randy. I'm so glad that you're able to sew that it, that they're, how awesome is that? Um, so thank you ladies for being here live with me. And, um, please, if you guys have, uh, any questions, any comments, anything you want to share, please feel free to put it below. I'll take another little break in a little bit and check and see if there's any, um, comments, but today's question for day one of my handcrafted holiday sew alongs, so that's what we're calling these things, um, is the question is, which part of your sewing would, do you wish you could skip? Um, for me, it is the cutting of the interfacing. I know some people wish they could skip ironing. Um, and some people do, like they start buying fabrics that don't need the ironing. Um, I actually enjoy ironing. Um, binding is one for a lot of people. I don't really mind binding. Um, the making of the binding sometimes can, like I don't choose a lot of patterns that have binding, so maybe binding is one of mine. But I find when I do do binding, it looks so nice. Um, so I try not to stay away from binding. All right, so the next little Piper ID um, that I'm doing is I made a bag for my bestie for Christmas um, with a, maybe you can guess what the theme is. It also has a Disney inspiration to it um, by me showing you the fabric. Um, it's she, it's her favorite. Um, she she loves it. We had to go visit the characters when we went to Disney with our kids with band. Um, so I'll just I'll just put this little piece up here. <laughs> Can you guess the Disney movie that this fabric goes with? Um, so we're gonna make a Piper ID wallet with some of my leftovers of that. Um, I'll have a little, I think this is from Indo Love. I think this is from Indo Love, this little um, rainbow um, snowflake zipper pull. Um, so, and then I have some rainbow um, tape and um, I'm using this because this is the only thing I have left to do one of these. Um, so I'm using this. And then I do not have a wristlet um, cut out of this. I think I'm just going, I do have some snowflake webbing. So I'll probably use that to do the, do the wristlet or if I have enough, I'll do a lanyard with it. So we're gonna get started. So the first thing with this pattern is you have to do your zipper. Um, so I'm gonna split my zipper tape here. And if you don't know, um, there is a, a, a way to make to do this without the tool that's easy. And I learned this, who else did I learn this from? Who did I learn this from? I don't remember who told me this or what whose video I saw this from. But the, the tooth that's higher than the other tooth, that's the one you wanna start with. And then when you put this in, hopefully it won't make a liar out of me, it'll be even, you can just push it. Yep, you can just push it down and now it's even. So I don't remember who, who told me that, but um, that's been a very helpful little tip. And I always usually take my little thread burner here and just kind of, I don't melt the teeth because God forbid you have to like take it apart. Um, but I do melt like the like little frays of the tape um, so that it doesn't keep fraying on me. 
All right, and then we're just gonna take our, our zipper tabs that I have interfaced. <laughs> um, and we're going to sew those on. So um, do you guys feel like now that you're here, do you feel like you want me to show you what I'm sewing since I already did one? Or do you wanna just see me? I feel like you wanna see the sewing. Um, but let me check. Hi, Yashina, how are you? I hope the triangle glide, I feel like I might make this a little wider than what I usually do only cause I tried the triangle glide last night and it was like a little loosey goosey. Um, so we might make it a little wider for this one. But yeah, I feel like the triangle is the only one I have cause I'm using come this week to more of these sew alongs cause I'm gonna be doing another bag. Um, and I had four of these and I used three of them and I only had one left. So I kind of want to just use this cause he's like the little odd duckling um, right now. So, yeah. So you made that look so, <laughs> like I said, it wasn't easy until I learned that little trick. So it'll be easy for you guys too now. All right, so I'm gonna tip this down so you can see. All right, we good? Feel like we're seeing the selling. I feel like we have a little bit of a glare there, but. Hopefully, hopefully you can see the sewing now. All right, so I just have my little um, tab for the zipper placed on the end here, and I'm just gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. And I have my seal right, my uh, stitch length is set at a 2.5. I find that, and it's so funny because when I first got my sale rate, I'm in the sale rate users group and you know, they just had a big sale, you know, for Black Friday and everything. So a bunch of other people just got their machines. And um, the thing about, I think, and I think this is all industrial machines, you, you figure out what does the machine like? It's not just about, you know, like we're so used to all these electronic fancy things. Um, you know, a, an industrial machine doesn't do much but sew. And so you're learning, you know, what stitch length is it like? What thread does it like, you know? And so a lot of people are in the group saying that they're having trouble starting and I, I can feel their pain because when I got this machine in the summertime, I definitely had, he, she didn't, um, we didn't get along very well at first. And it was really, I had to learn what she likes, you know, like, and uh, I find no more, like, uh, she doesn't like sewing just cotton without any interfacing because of course it's an industrial machine. She wants heavy duty stuff. Um, but having the 80 text or at least a 70 text thread making sure I'm oiling the bobbin area. She likes her bobbin area to be well taken care of. But I really, really like her. I'm so glad that we decided to, to take the plunge. <laughs> we have our zipper is all ready to go with our little zipper ends so nice all right now I'm just gonna set that aside we're gonna do this is the card um, the little card divider so I um, this is a self-adhesive interfacing um, from fabric therapy that I try not to use a whole lot because again it is an investment um, and it adds the price of my bags if I'm doing it in bigger pieces. But for this, this is really nice because I can cut it, you know, that I'm able to still see my one quarter inch um, seam allowance, but it does make it stiff enough to be a nice um, card slot. So uh, I definitely 
that's what I've been mostly using it on, just smaller, smaller little pieces that I feel like I really want them to have more, more of a structure to. So we're gonna leave our little opening for our hole. bobbin is out okay well anybody else do this when you know you're not going to see the bobbin I don't have another bobbin made with fairy floss so we're gonna this is a blue variegated so it'll work just fine with this You're not going to see it anywhere anyways. Okay. I'm excited to sew um, all of these things with y'all over the next couple weeks. I feel like it'll be a lot of fun just to kind of sew with you what I'm sewing. Um, I'm getting ready for my shop and getting ready for so magical because um, I'll be doing a lot of that um, this month and next month getting ready for so magical so making some things with my shambori fabrics um, I'm so excited to teach um, at so magical if you're going to so magical and you're watching this say hi tell me you're gonna be there um, even if you're not gonna take my class I hope to make some friends. I hope to take some classes too. If you're teaching a class, I'd love to know what class you're teaching. Um, yeah, because we can all learn from each other. Again, these applique scissors are so good because you can see, I think mine need a little sharpening though, but Turn this little puppy around. Use. I think you can find these at like a dollar store, right? I don't know. I think I got them at a Christmas party one time, at like a family Christmas party. It was like a you know, like we were doing games or something. And that was one of the prizes. So if something ever happens to that one, I'm gonna have to like search for them. But I think you can get them at like dollar stores and stuff. All right, so now we have our little card slot area. And we're just gonna do a top stitch around. bottom off.
Okay. Our little lens back here. Alrighty, so we have that done. That's all ready to go. Let's see here. Randy, I'm glad you're watching my technique. Thank you. Um, Yoshina says, will you have class kits available for sale for those of us who can't attend? Well, my dear, I believe we will. Um, I'm, it I mean, truly, it really depends how many people decide to take class because I have ordered, um, you know, enough for two full classes um, and a little bit extra. So, um, but I think we're probably going to offer some sort of either like pre-order or um, if I see, because I'm not sure how this works, because again, this is my first time. Um, we're going to see if like when I know like how many people are in the class, maybe um, I'll be able to place another order for some things. But I do have enough of fabric and um, dye to make more kits than what is in the class. So I do believe so. Stay tuned. Um, I would like to do that because um, I'd like to be able to offer like an online class for it. Um, Cause there are some techniques, like I do have a video on doing Shambori, um, but there are some techniques that I'll be doing in the class that are more conducive to someone doing smaller batches um, than what I usually do when I do it all outside. So, um, so yeah. All right, so we're gonna do this. And like I said, we're gonna make it a little bit wider. So let's get our little, little guy here. Again, I probably use way too much of this tape, but it comes in handy. Well, I'm gonna put it in the middle, but I'm only gonna like slightly touch the edges of it, I think. Just to make this a little bit wider of a piece, yeah. that'll look a little bit better than how skinny it gets if you fold it all the way in yeah that's that's a little nicer I feel like I just don't want it to I don't want it to twist on somebody so let's see here I think I'm gonna put a piece of tape down and I'm gonna stitch close to there I have my narrow foot on my sail, right? It doesn't um, come with this foot. It comes with like a, a really heavy duty walking foot that we used for when we did the um, tent, when we repaired our tent for the campsites. Mm -hmm. um, but I find the narrow mm -hmm. foot is great because it's, it's not a zipper foot. Um, it still has like an, a, a guidance area but um it's narrow enough that I can do zippers and I can get into places like this with my with like hardware and stuff so mm -hmm. look at all those little threads and see how much your hand shakes as you get older right okay 
Now we're gonna move on to the window piece since we have all of our little, our, well, we don't have this done. <laughs> but we have all of our little pieces ready to go. We're gonna move on to doing the window. Um, so what I like to do is move the zipper over a little bit because I know people tell you not to do this, but I need to find my centers on stuff. Find your center. And I just make little, 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 little clips. Nothing crazy. On your zipper and find the center on your on your pieces. Now for the Piper ID walls, I always like to look at my pieces and decide like, you know, which one's gonna be the window and which ones are gonna which one's gonna be the back. Because, you know, depending on your print, like this one here I think will be nice to do as the window because it's not like there's not as much um, snowflakes on it. Like this big snowflake is actually going to be um, up in the corner pretty nice. Um, you know, but like this one here though, I wouldn't want to cut the window out of that because you wouldn't see the really pretty snowflake. So I think, I think this is going to be my back. So I'm going to set this one aside and make that my back because it's so big and pretty. Um, and then use these other two as my insides. Um, but this one's going to be my top. So I want to keep that one. And then I guess I'll do this one as one of the linings. All right, so you're gonna sandwich this and this. Yep. <laughs> I hear my father-in-law telling Apollo to sit. So he must be uh, <laughs> begging for food. <laughs> Not our dog, he's not spoiled. Not one bit. He's so funny, because we got this advent calendar. If you're in my handcrafted Facebook group, you saw that a picture of him sitting in front of the advent calendar that we got him from Costco. And uh, in the morning, after he goes out first thing in the morning, if I say, let's go get your calendar, he like runs like a little kid into the living room to the piano where we have it. like. Okay, mom, I'm ready. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, let's see here. We're just gonna take it easy here. Now in the pattern, um, she says to baste it down first. As you can see, I skipped that part. Um, I would say for your first few, I would definitely do it just because you get used to like exactly where things lay. Um, but once you made a couple, I think you're, you're pretty good to go. You will also notice that I didn't cut out the hole yet for the window and there is a reason for that. Lindsay does share in the video for it. Like if you cut it out beforehand, what happens is you most likely are gonna have like your two pieces, the window will be off. Um, so, you know, wait, wait to do that part till after you've done your top stitch and got everything aligned where you really want it. So we're gonna, Top stitch these. I know we're getting close to the hour, but if you want, if you if you're here, I'll finish this one just so we can see it fully completed because I have the I have the time to do that. All right. I'm gonna um, show you how I draw this out and then I use an X-Acto knife to cut it out. So I will go over to my table and do that, but I'll go get the template and show you how I line it up here. <laughs> I 
gonna pause this leaf. Mom, open the door. Open the door, Mom. Okay, so I don't have any snacks. That's where you were down pest and pat. All right, so this is the template and you cut this little window out and then you have little lines. Um, so I, you wanna line it up, like now that you did that top stitching, you don't wanna line it up with this top edge, you wanna line it up with the bottom edge. And I just use my heat erase marker, air erase marker, and draw the lines, go in each of the lines. If it was vinyl, I'd use my vinyl marker and then draw the square. All right. And now I have to go over to my cutting table because I don't have a cutting mat here. I'll lift you all up so we can say hello again and you can see my cutting table. All right. And I'm gonna grab my X-Acto knife and we're just gonna, hopefully, oh, I know I, I'm blocking you with my chair. I'm just gonna take my exact, and I'm gonna cut through both um, the lining and the top. I'm gonna do the little lines first. And you can take your template off. I try to keep it clipped um, when I'm doing this to just keep it in place. And then I use my exacto knife to just follow the box all the way around. Let's see if I got all the way through. When you have the interfacing, and this is canvas, um, it's a little bit harder with the canvas to get all the way through the first time around. There we go. And then grab my fray check. Cause definitely if it's, um, grab some fray check. Because if it's canvas or even cotton woven, when you do the folding, sometimes in the corners, it, it frays a little bit, so you need that. All right, so there we have our hole, all right? We have our fray check. Now what we're gonna do, and I use tape for this, so I'll, I'll tilt you all down again, okay? <laughs> all right, here we go. Tilt you down so you can see here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up like so, and I'm going to take double-sided tape and do all four, put double-sided tape on all four of those to hold them down. Um, I tried doing it with just clips and I don't know, double-sided tape just, it makes sense. Oh, and there's the up sky is here. That wouldn't be for me. Boy, he's really playing the music. Apollo doesn't like that. Figuring they need to do whatever gets them through this time of year. More power to them. I wouldn't want to be doing that job. So, I'm thankful that I can order online and have it delivered. So here we're gonna do the first one. I'm just gonna take all the paper off. Apollo sounds so mean, but he's such a sweet dog. Like everybody's afraid of him, but he really is such a sweet dog. Ooh. And there, I don't have, it didn't go all the way through. So I need to flip that. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just fold as far as you can to that those corners and um, fold it down to hold it in place, okay? <laughs> Apollo, oh, who is that buddy? All right, and then what I do is I take the fray check because each of these corners now, I see you. I see, I hear, I know there was someone here, huh? I need to get a pen, because fray check always seems to go closed on itself. 
I hear you. It's okay. I usually do the little fray check at each of these corners just to keep it from Okay, now this one, it's always funny trying to find the end of your double-sided tape. Tomorrow, I, pro I don't know if I'll get, I have a meeting to go tonight, I'm on a local school board. So I have a school board meeting tonight. So I don't know if I'll get, I'll probably get the other Piper ID wallet done that I have cut um, today yet. And then tomorrow we'll be doing a different pattern. I have a fair amount of stuff cut out for us to do together for this week. Um, I probably will be doing these at 1.30 each day. Um, the only day that I probably won't be doing it, um, at 1.30 is on Thursday. I have a doctor's appointment and, um, it's in the morning, but you know, you never know how long something's going to take. It's just a regular, you know, well, what do you call those? Well visits, I guess. It's just routine. It's nothing, but where I live, everything is 45 minutes away. So, and I might stop and do some Christmas shopping. So Thursdays might be a, a little later in the day, or it might be at 1.30 if all goes well. All right, so we have those. Now I wanna put the fray check on each, oh goodness, each of these corners. Come on. My fray check really isn't that old, so it should come out. There we go. Okay. Now, we put the window in there, put our little ID window in there. And I buy, um, this is, oh goodness, this is the, I wanna say it's the eight millimeter, but I could be wrong. It's, or it's, no, is it the four millimeter? I'll have to look, I'll put it in the details. Um, I get this from um, Wonderground Fabrics. They have, from what I've found, as far as like, basic clear vinyl they have the most um like they she has the different widths like the different thicknesses this is the really thin stuff all right it's not like the heavy duty printed um vinyl that we get to do like actual bags this works really great and it's cheap it's like three bucks for a whole roll of it um so this is what i get to do these so i'm gonna more tape <laughs> because it just holds everything where you want it. And I just put the tape along both sides on one side. All right, so just kind of line it up on one side and then on the top and bottom on the other, and that holds everything in place really nicely so that you can get it stitched. And also position it the way you want it to look on the outside. So. All right, which is my, this is my front. So I make sure that all of this here is like tucked in at the top. All right. Can be tricky sometimes the tape wants to catch other things. So, and then bring it forward. 
and then the tape wants to catch that. I usually do it the opposite way and I didn't realize that I was t attaching it to the top first. I usually attach it to the bottom first. Come on. There we go. All right. And now I might need to detach these. Let's attach it to the bottom first, Jenna. There we go. All right, so we're attaching it to the bottom first. Now we'll line up our top where we want it. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we can top stitch around the frame. I have clips over here. This one's gonna be pretty. This uh, this white fabric, like I said, I made a bag for my bestie. I'll show you guys all after, like I took pictures, so I'll show in my group after I give it to her. Cause I always wonder if she, she doesn't really watch a whole lot of Facebook or anything. I know she doesn't watch YouTube, but I, I always worry when I make something for a family member or a friend, like this would be the one time that they actually look mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then they see their something I made them. So, all right. So we're just gonna top stitch. It's just a, an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around your frame. And the interfacing that I used on all the pieces was um, it's a light um, like foam interfacing from from uh, Joann's. It's not really thick, but it's enough to make it kind of give that quilted look. stitch there I'm gonna pull that through just to make that look real nice these snips from fabric therapy are great because they have nice real pointy ends so I don't need to use my stiletto to do it I can use my little snips that I keep here at my machine I was telling you where I got this fabric from. So anyways, this white fabric was actually a panel that I got from, um, I believe Itching to Get Stitching. Um, it was so cute. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to do the part that you saw in the beginning is we're gonna put the little card um, slot right over that. And I usually line it up right underneath where my top stitching is. And again, this is where your, these big jumbo clips, and I just get them from Amazon. I'd love to get some of these for the kits for um, my class at So Magical, but I tried to get in contact with the supplier and they still haven't responded to me. So I don't know if we'll have them. The, the only reason I like these is I feel like they're so reusable, like you could reuse them in the kit. Clothes pins work fine for Shambori as well. I just, I want to try to give as much in the kit that is like you can use it again um, when you, I mean the, the clothes pins you can too. They just become dyed with the pigment of the Shambori. So now we're, we're gonna stitch that card slot down and we start where our um, zipper tabs um, are. And we're just gonna do a little back stitching. I 
and you can feel where the end, the edge of it is. So. cute. I like this one. All right. Now we need to do, I said this was going to be the back and this was going to be the other lining. So I need to find my centers there. Where's my, my snips? I'd love to know if there's something that you all are making um, special for your friends. Um, I really wanted to, my, my best friend, she is finishing her, um, teaching certificate. So I wanted to make her something so she could use it with her class. And I want to open this a little bit. Oh, look what I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting a bag tag, y'all. Let's get a bag tag. Let's see here. I don't think I have any more. I did have some frozen little woven labels from Mormino, but I don't think I have any more of those. So we'll put We'll put another you got this on there if I can find it. I don't want to do the not your cup of tea. There's a you got this. Okay. <laughs> Randy says, I'm running out of time to make everything I want to for others. And the list continues, Randy. <laughs> I feel like every day I see something else where I'm like, oh, I could make that for so-and-so. And then I have to remind myself like, um, no, <laughs> Jenna, there's no more time <laughs> for you to be making that. Yeah, I feel you, Randy, I feel you. Where do you get your bag tags? So these tags um, I got from an Etsy shop called Minimize. Um, they are just laser. I don't know if you're, I'm getting a glare now. Um, let me close that window. Curtain. Let's see if it's a little better. Um, yeah, a little, little bit better. Um, so these, um, from Minimize Shop, um, I got, it's just like a faux leather and then they do a laser. Um, and they're, they're a nice thickness. I actually, I like them from there because it's a nice thickness. Now I did just get, um, and you'll see some of these um, in the live sews that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I did just order some from Heartwood and Hyde. Um, you usually have to get on a list with Heartwood and Hyde and then she contacts you when she's able to do them, but they were um, printed and they're gorgeous. Um, I'm really, really happy with them. Um, but I probably will still get some um, just because of cost for a Minimize shop. It does take, I will tell you, Minimize shop is not a U.S. shop, so it does take a little while to get them. Um, but, I again, I like the thickness of them. And for something you're selling in your shop, um, you know, to keep your costs down, it definitely... is nice to have a shop you can work with that, um, you know, you just need basic tags. Like everything I make doesn't need to have a really fancy tag.
before we're done here, I'll show you the other Piper ID wall at the fabric that I have for that one. Um, because I'm kind of excited about it because it's on my Shimbori fabric is the lining um, that I did the other week when we were doing some testing for for the class. I decided to, sometimes it's hard when you make the fabric yourself to cut into it. Like today I was like, oh, that's it got so pretty as a pattern, but like what else am I going to use it for? <laughs> it's fabric. <laughs> turn it into something so okay so now that goes on top of this and this goes on top of this like so I find sometimes when I'm talking to myself when I'm sewing I do it in a singing voice. It's really, like, I, I thought to myself the other day, I'm like, that's a really weird thing. I wonder if anybody else does that. I'm not a singer, <laughs> but it's like when I sing to my dog. Who knows? Again, when you're by yourself most mm -hmm. of the time, you do weird things. My husband is second shift, so I'm, it's, and we were talking yesterday, I was like, it's so weird now that the kids are getting older and we don't, when our daughter isn't here, like, I don't realize how I'm not around people. So, sometimes I think, am I, am I keeping the conversation going when I am around people? Remembering how to, how to have communications. All right. I think this one's going to sell. I don't know. I would buy it. It's so pretty. Look how pretty that is. Oh, my goodness. All right. We're going to get that one ready to top stitch. everything my dog just thinks I'm nuts and I love you <laughs> yes uh, I swear sometimes Apollo looks at me like okay mom <laughs> whatever <laughs> So now we're going to open that zipper all the way and we're going to make sure we're matching, matching our seams. Sheena, I think you were right about how cute this is going to gonna look no oh, I want to put it this way because I want it at the top where it closes okay I always leave a little bit out I actually cut these a little bit um, bigger than the actual pattern just to have it be a little bit longer especially if you're doing vinyl because the vinyl is gonna be really really thick here um, I try to make sure that this is a little bit longer just because that's where on these ID wallets, no matter where you get them or who you buy them for, this is always what goes um, because there's so much weight being pulled on this. So whatever your pattern is that you're doing, even if it isn't Lindsay's, um, make your little tab piece a little wider so that it's a little longer and you can you can make sure there's a, a decent amount there for you to catch. Okay. Let's 
Let's stitch this baby up. I don't have a whole lot of room there. I'm trying to push it over. There we go. this baby can do is just amazing. And now I might need just to jump, just to push it. There we go. Okay. Let's see, make sure everything's really nice there. Excited to see this one turned out. Do my little stitches, melt everything. All right, I'll clip this down. I leave the length of the tab there. I know some people cut it off, but I leave the length of the tab there because like I said, that's just the, that's the stress point. All right. Let's see how she looks. This one's, the, the canvas is a lot stiffer than the snack fabric that was just cotton woven. Ooh, it's so pretty. All right, let's get these tabs pulled up here. Side there. Oh, it's so pretty. You could give it a little press if you wanted to. Sometimes that helps with your zipper. If it if your zipper looks a little wonky, sometimes the heat kind of allows you to kind of stretch it out and don't put your don't put your iron right on top of this because that will melt it. I usually do it from this side. Put a piece of fabric over it and then I'll iron. Just get the heat of the iron on there. And making that wider, Yoshina was definitely that was definitely a better idea because I like I like how that looks. And then just a pretty little so cute. It looks so good. All right. So I'll bring you guys back up. So we can chitty chat just a little bit. Don't want to make the videos too long because I want people to be able to watch the replays. Um, but yeah, this got so cute. And then I'm going to add as well, I'll add another. Um, oh, no. Oh, yeah. It can clip on with the. I was like, oh, it can't clip on. It can clip on because this is a um, keychain ring. So it can clip on that way. Um, I'll add a wristlet um, to go along with that. 
All right, let's see what other comments. Again, if you're just tuning in live, um, please let me know which part of sewing would you like to skip? That's today's question. And join me tomorrow for the next Handcrafted Holidays Sew Along Live with me, Genevieve, here at the Handcraft Thunderbird Handcrafted in my creativity corner. I'm going to be doing this all month. This was fun. I, I enjoyed it. For my, I was very nervous about my first live, y'all. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Um, you're seeing ask which scissors are those? They're cutting through the layers with ease. So these are, they're the Gunther. Is that what that name is? Or I don't know. It's a German name. Um, but these are actually applique scissors. That's why it's um, flat here. And I love having a pair of applique scissors next to my sewing machine for the, those purposes, for getting around the edges of something because like your regular scissors, and I don't even, my regular scissors is hanging up, but your regular scissors, this part is really kind of thick on the top. So what happens when you're, and there went my little, Doomahiggy I had laying on top. What happens when you're cutting around this, that thick top, you're actually not really seeing, if you're trying to get like that one eighth inch kind of um, seam, um, you're actually cutting away more than what you think. This is allowing you to just really see exactly right where you're cutting. Um, and so I highly recommend, ask Santa to put one of these in your stocking because um, it, it's really helpful. And you can also, these, I don't know, is it ginger? I'm so, maybe it's ginger. They're Italy, not Germany. They're made in Italy, all right? Um, I think I got these at Joann's. I think they carry, I mean, I've had these for a long time. Um, but you can resharpen them too. So that's what's nice about a scissors like this is you can run a sharpener through them and they resharpen pretty nice. So yeah, I love them. Oh, thank you, Sheena. I this was really fun. I I feel like um, there'll definitely be more lives in the future. I do want to do more recorded. Like there are things that I plan for January to have more pre-recorded. I just don't have the time to do editing this time of year. And I thought, well, if I don't have time to edit, I sew pretty much every day. Why not do a live sew along? The camera, like this, is the other piece of the thing. Like I'm, I don't feel like investing in all the gear and everything to do YouTube's like you'll see like I have a like a rig over there over my cutting table and everything like there's a lot of money that goes into like that part of um YouTube channels and I just feel like I would rather buy fabric <laughs> um so um the lives will be a little less like production quality um I just have a snake camera thing here and we'll tilt it down. You can see what, if you guys are cool with that, that's how we're gonna roll. <laughs> um, because I'd rather buy fabric and other sewing goodies um, and invest in other things to show you all than have some type of crazy camera angle. But um, yeah, so tomorrow we'll open the next Sally Tomato. I might have, obviously I had packages being delivered so I might have some other fun um, packages to share with you all, um, but I thank you. Thank you for joining me live. I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. And now we have to figure out how we turn this off because I have no idea. <laughs> Do I just hit X? I might just hit X.